Okay, so in a previous video, I demonstrated to you how to make some really cool kokanee lures using these pre-dyed micro shrimps here uh, that you can get on Amazon for really cheap. And I showed how you can use these lure dips to dip them in there and you can create uh, red colors, you can create red pink, there's blue, there's a bunch of different dip colors that you can do and then you can tie up uh, just the shrimp rig or you can add uh, spinners to it or whatever you want to do. But now today I'm going to show you how you can produce an almost endless variety of different kokanee micro shrimp colors and patterns uh, just using a very simple technique. And I'm going to go through that today. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is some undyed. These are glow micro shrimps and I will put links to these in the description below. You get like 50 of them for 10 bucks, so they're pretty cheap. Uh, they will come uh, already with holes drilled all the way through them, so they're formed with that hole that makes it really easy for you to thread the line through. I'll just show you how that works here. So on the back of the shrimp, there's actually a little hole. You can just slide your line through there, and then you can tie it up. I just wanted to have a wire there to kind of show you how that works. So it's easy to do. You don't have to thread them or have a needle or anything. Sometimes they're not perfectly formed. I mean, these are mass produced. So you can use a pair of scissors to trim up any of the uh, little bits of plastic that are left over from when they're making these and pouring them in the molds. But otherwise, there's no need to stress too much over it. The coconut really don't care if there's little horns on the shrimp or anything. Next, I use uh, lure markers from Spike It. Now these come in a bunch of different scents, but they have some unscented ones, and I think they have seven different colors. Uh, I've got a handful of them here, I'm going to show you kind of the features of these different markers, what kind of colors you get with them. So here are the, some of the colors I'm going to be working with today. They have an orange, hot pink, uh, fire red, chartreuse, and then a lime green. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I paint these things using these Spike It unscented lure markers. So to begin with, I either get a piece of wire. You can use um, something like, say, a paper clip that you've straightened out. And I'll run that through there. That makes it easier for me to handle the shrimp. So then once I got it on there, I just take the marker. You just pop it off. You want to shake it a little bit. You'll feel it kind of rattling around there. It helps to get the dye flowing. Pop it off. It looks just like any other marker, so it just has a marker tip. And then you just want to start going back and forth over it. So what I'm going to do here is show you that uh, if you just do one layer, it will be pretty light. So I'm going to do uh, three of them here, and I'll just go over them just real quick with one layer. Um, I noticed that uh, it'll darken up if you let it dry and then do subsequent layers. If you kind of just do back and forth smearing, it doesn't seem to get any darker until after it dries. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three different cycles uh, where I'll basically paint it and let it dry. And then I'll show you that you can actually get a much more intense color um, if you let it dry in between. You can use a blow dryer or just let it air dry. It happens very fast. So we'll do three different patterns here. Okay, so you can see this is one coat, two coats, three coats. It gets quite a bit more intense and dark, especially on the lighter colors like the chartreuse. There's one coat. It's more kind of a see-through. That'll allow that glow to show through more. Um, but then you look at the two coats, and then the three coats is really dark. Um, so it will darken up more and more with each coat. So you can vary up the intensity of the color if you want to. Sometimes those subtler colors might let a little bit of that glow show through, especially in the early morning um, and deep water situations. Um, but yeah, these can really change the intensity. So make sure to let it dry between each um, coat or application. Now another thing you might consider doing is uh, multicolor. So uh, just like with any paints, you can paint darker colors on top of lighter colors, but you can't go the opposite way. So here I have uh, all pink shrimp, and maybe I want to add some red barring. So what I can do is, uh, you know, grip it so it doesn't rotate on that wire, and I have a red marker, and I can go ahead and add some red barring down the sides here, just to give it some more pattern. 
there. I even do a little bit of red up on the nose, like that. And then I can cycle that around and uh, repeat. So a little bit of red up there. Bring this red here. Up and over the top. It's hard to do with the camera blocking my normal way I would do this. And then just bring this red across. So now I have a red and pink barring. Another pattern would be like a tricolor pattern, which works really well. Uh, just creates a lot of interesting color ref reflections off of it. So here, um, instead of starting with a base, I'm going to start with a clean shrimp and do some orange on the head. Sometimes the antenna are the most frustrating part. If you lay them down on something and paint it, it's better, but I'm trying to do it up off the, off the wood. For this video but what we'll do is we'll do orange a couple layers on the head to really darken it up and we'll let that dry and come back and hit it again it dries pretty fast at least where I'm at in my climate it's very dry here if you live on the wet side of the mountains it might take a little longer for it to, uh, to dry up Okay, that looks pretty good. Then we'll add a chartreuse body. And again, this is going to be a couple layers in itself. Now the thing is, when you have two different paints coming together, um, you know, it's not so detrimental when it's a, a paler paint like this chartreuse on top of the orange. But if I was going vice versa, that orange would definitely bleed over. And a lot of times I found that uh, the paint itself, the dye, acts as a solvent and will re-dissolve uh, freshly applied paint. So it might destroy a pattern. So don't think that you can layer patterns on top of each other and expect it to turn out really good. So uh, be wary of how much uh, you try to overlap them. You can do it a little bit like if you're like I did with that red and pink, but if you start smearing, it'll just smear it away. I find if you want to put a darker color on top of a lighter color, it's best to kind of blotch it on top. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. Come back in and give it another layer. There we go, it looks pretty good. Okay, now we're gonna add a lime tail to it. The lime, this marker was actually came in the mail a little bit dried and I had to reach out to their customer service hopefully they'll send me another one but I rehydrated it a little bit um, so it takes a couple more layers I think the lime is supposed to be more vibrant than this one but we're going to go ahead and give us a couple layers of that lime come back hit it again the line really seems to intensify quite a bit on its second coat. There we go. That's looking pretty good. So now we'll go ahead and, and uh, let's go ahead and spice up the legs a little bit. We'll just add a little bit of pink to those legs. Just brushing it across there. Yeah, I like that. Really looks good now. And so there you go. There's a nice multicolor shrimp. Another one of my favorite patterns is the candy cane shrimp. And I'm going to go ahead and do that one for you too. Because it actually looks like a real tropical shrimp um, in nature. And I just love being inspired by nature's own patterns. So what we do is we start with the plain glow and then the, the fire red. And we're going to start behind the eye here. And we're going to make a band that comes up over the top and then we're going to come back and mimic that and make it symmetrical on the other side here we go and then we'll come forward and we'll do the nose of the shrimp get those antenna kind of give it that white band look around the eye 
this red's very intense so it only takes one layer and it looks really good and then we'll come back and add some more banding systematically down the back looks good Maybe a small saddle back here. Okay. And then we'll definitely do some red on the tail. Maybe leading out. And do the same on the other side. And then we'll do maybe some banding on the on the legs as well. Not all of them, just some of them. Just give it some cool detail. That looks really cool. And I've done other things like add barring to like some pink and orange to give it that tiger. You can also do barring with orange, red, whatever you want to do. You can be very creative. Um, I've done double barring by using a little bit wider uh, markers across there or even outlined um, some of these other ones to create multi-layer barring so you can really do whatever you want with this and be very creative I'm just going to quickly show you how I would rig these up um, if you don't know how uh, my favorite hooks are the split shot drop shots from Gamakatsu this is size 2 that's sort of my all around size if I'm fishing for bigger kokanee like in Lake Roosevelt or Flaming Gorge, I'm going to go up to size 1s, and I'll even go down to size 4s if I'm fishing in lakes that have really small kokanee. Um, so I do like to cater my hooks to uh, the specific fishery, but the size 2s seem to work all around. So I'll, I'll pull out a little bit of 10 pound Maxima Ultra Green. Don't need a lot here because I don't have really long meters. It's very easy to do, so just take two hooks, take your tag end, your line, and run it through the eye, which is hard to do from this distance. There we go. And just run about an inch through the eye there. That's all you need to do. And then you're going to just wrap a snell hook knot on here. I do about six to seven wraps back. Take your other tag end. I've only got about two foot of line here, which is probably way more than I need. And then pull it back through. <laughs> Don't grab the other hook. Not what I wanted to do. Sorry about that. There we go. So there's the first hook applied. Take the top end of your tag line, take the other hook, run it through, down the line, until it's just above the other hook. Now the length you set between these hooks is personal preference, but I generally set the other hook just a hair, a couple of millimeters above the other one. And I generally like to try to offset them so they're kind of pointing like this. In the end, they usually end up not exactly that way, but the more offset I get, the better I feel like I have a chance at getting a hook up than having them in line. So I just set it in place, repeat the same snell knot, six, seven wraps. Hold it in place, bring the other tag in back around. It's hard to do when it's away from my body and under the camera. Tighten it up. Okay, there you go. So that is all set. We want to just trim off that tag end back there. Now we're ready to put on the micro hoochie. Okay, so I generally run these down to the hooks from the front. So there's a little channel right here up at the front of the shrimp. It's really hard to see. But you just push your line in there and it will slide down the leader. And then it'll come out back here by the fins. And then you can just pull this all the way through. So it gets to the hooks. And then what I do is I will push that hook up inside that channel and that locks it into a really good position. Okay? And that is absolutely all you need to do. 
run that six to eight inches behind the dodger. And I just tie a little surgeon's loop on the end, so I'll go out about six to eight inches here, make a loop, and then you're basically just doing two overhand knots with the loop. That's a surgeon's loop. It doesn't really matter the size of the hoop uh, or loop because the dodger throws it around the same, I've noticed. So once you get your first one, just come back through with your second. And there you go, there's the loop, and that's ready to just be clipped into a dodger. Just clear off the uh, tag end, and there you go. That's up to your lure. I'll put links to all the markers and to the micro shrimps in here uh, below, as well as the hooks and everything, as well as some links to the video where I show you how to use the lure dip uh, to do the pink ones. And I'll also put uh, links to another video that goes over hook selection for kokanee. Definitely worth watching that. Um, I've done a lot of experiments with hooks. And these are my favorite hooks, but there's other hooks I will use in other situations as well. Otherwise, if you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below and I'll get back to you. Otherwise, just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.